Hi, in this video we're going to look at creating sub bass and FM8 and a few tricks you can use to make it sound more interesting and stand out. So I've got the default patch that FM8 loads with and I've just got a simple pattern that I've written. So let's just have a listen to how it sounds at the moment. So the first thing to deal with is the clicking. So if we go into the envelope tab here, and they've got this little tab called link. So we can link up all the amplitude envelopes for all the operators together. And then we can do a little bit of a fade in and a fade out, and then that will get rid of most of the clicking. So let's have a listen to that now. It's not, not perfect, but it's got rid of the worst of it. And then the other thing to look at is this tab here. In the operator tab, there is this little button called key sync. So what this does is it's the same as the retrigger via gate you have in Native Instruments Massive. So every time you play a new note, it will restart the phase of the operator. Otherwise they free run, which you don't really want in sub bass because it means that every note will fluctuate because the phase cancellation will be different. So you'll we won't have this consistency, which I'll demonstrate a bit further on. So once we've got that, we've just got this basic sine wave. We can add some definition to it with uh, the pitch envelope, which again in here it's, this little button here, you can have it for any of the six operators or all of them at once. By default, it loads for all of them. If I just add a point at the start. And then the depth of the envelope is this knob here. And the next thing we can do is to add another operator. So this top row here at the bottom on the outputs is the mixer and then below it is just panning. So if I get operator E and turn up here, now that's gonna go be combined with the signal of operator F. So we've got the same envelope sine wave again, but what we can do is to tune this, which is using the ratio. And that'll give us some movement. And we can control the speed of that by how much we did tune by. So if we compare that with turning off the key sync, you'll see what a difference it makes. So at the moment, um, you know, the notes are going up and down, so there's going to be a slight inconsistency in level, but it's reasonably consistent if we look in the, the decibel meter. It's all hitting around the same level, but if I turn off the key sync, it's not as consistent, which we want to avoid with sub bass because you want it to be as controlled as possible to make it easy to mix into a track. So the next thing we can do to that is to add some harmonics to it so it's not just pure sub to make it more audible. So 
So there's two ways we can do this. We can do it through using distortion or we can do it using frequency modulation. So let's try both techniques and see what difference they make. So operator X in here is a noise generator and a saturator. It's like a basic wave shaper. So what we can do is root operator F into X, root E into X, then turn them off into the mixer and then just root X into the mixer. And now we've got some more frequency information above the sub, which makes it more audible. With frequency modulation, we could instead use an operator and route that to both of these and just use a little bit of FM to add harmonics. So let's try that instead. And we can use that as well as the saturation. Another trick you can do as well to create harmonics is using the filter. If I disable D for the moment and just root F and E straight into the filter. And instead we have a we have a pair of filters, but I'm just going to use one of them. So if I just turn the mix knob all the way down to one and turn it to parallel instead of series. And then this top row here, cut off resonance and the filter mode are controlling the first filter. Just turn this down a bit because it might jump up in amplitude quite a lot. So what we can do is turn the resonance up quite high and then if you find a sweet spot, what it'll do is the resonance will add harmonics just above where the fundamental is. So if I play it at the moment as it is just to show you. So that's what it looks like at the moment. And then we turn the resonance up quite high. We've got this from the this resonant part that's been added above the fundamental, which you can play with, which can be quite cool for creating harmonics. And as you can hear, it made it makes a huge difference to the amplitude. It depends on the source sound though as well to how much of the difference the filter resonance makes. The other thing we can do is we can play around with the effects in here. They're not the best of effects, but the distortions are okay. We've got a overdrive and a tube amp. Uh, 
and that adds more harmonics and same as with the tube amp And I'll just make it more audible on smaller sound systems or if, or if someone's listening to the track on some small speakers that don't deliver a lot of low end. You can do that with third party VSTs as well. So I've got Trash loaded up here and let's have a go and see if we can boost the very, very high end of it. So if I go into the distortion, go to Blues Driver. And then we've got this tab here called filter, which is a post filter. I'll try boosting the high end. And that's like a buzziness above it. And then what we could do is if we didn't want all this mid range information, but we wanted to keep the high end to give it some definition. We could cut that out. And you can just play around until you find an algorithm that works nicely and just add some bite into the higher end, which gives it some definition. And then you've still got plenty of room here for a mid-range bass, if that's what you were going for. But you, you could start off with something like this as well and use this as the, the low end For your track and then if you wanted some more harmonics you could just add operators in here as well so if i go for c and then go for a more complex waveform maybe put that up an octave higher and do some fm You can play around and create almost anything. And that's going to be.
an octave above the actual low end with this being taken up to two. So then you've got room underneath without this sort of conflicting with the low end you've already got. That's just some ideas you can play around with. I could unlink this as well and just use this as something for some more attack to the note. That just adds like a little bit of definition to the start of the note. And on operator E, where this detuning is taking place by changing the speed of this makes a huge deal of difference as well to the, to the movement in the patch. So yeah, there's some tricks you can go about to make cool sub-basses in your track using FM8.